Today, we're diving into not so good news in the NAS world. If you are a Synology user, or if you're going to be in the market for purchasing a home lab NAS or just a NAS for your home network in general for things like media sharing, etc., and you've been considering Synology NAS devices, which historically they have been some of the best out there, Synology just started locking down support for third-party drives in their newer NAS models. Yep, you heard that right. They're now enforcing the use of Synology branded hard drives on select models, and it's just not a soft nudge. It's more like a hard wall. Let's break down what's going on, why it matters, and most importantly, what alternatives you have if you want the freedom and flexibility for your home lab or home server NAS setup. So let's dive in. And now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. What exactly did Synology do? Starting with their Plus, XS Plus, and Enterprise Series NAS devices, Synology is limiting compatibility to only their own branded drives like the HAT5300 and SAT5210. If you try to use third-party drives like Western Digital or Seagate, you might face warnings, drive rejections, or even disabled features. Some models won't even let you proceed unless you swap the drives out for the official SKUs. And just to be clear, these are rebranded Toshiba drives with a Synology label and a higher price tag. That's not a great look when you're paying a premium already for Synology devices, which they have always been some of the most expensive out there. Now, to be fair, Synology says this move ensures compatibility, it reduces support issues, and it improves performance. But here's the issue that I have and I know many in the community have. It takes away the user choice. Home labbers, SMBs, and power users are used to building systems with drives that make sense for their budget and performance needs. And let's be honest, we all look for those deals as they come along on hard drives and other hardware. Locking down the hardware like this goes against the very DIY spirit that made Synology a popular choice in the first place. Now, let's say that you picked up a Synology NAS chassis and already own a few enterprise grade WD Red or Seagate exhaust drives. With this change, those perfectly good drives may get flagged as incompatible. So you'll either have to ignore the warnings, assuming the system will let you do that, or you'll have to shell out the extra money for Synology branded drives. If Synology disables critical features like alerts, firmware updates, health checks for non-Synology drives, that's a real problem. I mean, can you imagine operating your NAS without that visibility or some of those firmware updates? So why would they do this? Well, they say it will help them to improve the support experience and to also help with performance and a few other things. However, I'm just calling this out there. If that were true, wouldn't it be easier to just certify drives that are already on the market? At the end of the day, we all know that these big box storage vendors are just relabeling mass produced drives anyway and perhaps releasing their own firmware for those mass produced drives. Also, I think Synology is just simply going the way of many of the other enterprise vendors out there. Dell has been doing this for years. If you've been in the enterprise space and worked with Dell storage, and I'm sure many of the other vendors are this way as well, if you have Dell storage equipment and you don't use Dell branded drives with the Dell firmware, you will see an error in their software such as OME or OMSA that these drives will be flagged as incompatible or non-supported. However, I don't quite think there's a point at which you will actually lose features aside from the warning, but I could be wrong on that. 
and there are other support shortcomings once the support engineer finds out that you're using non-Dell branded drives. So all in all, I think at the end of the day, it's very hard not to see this as a hard vendor lock-in with an intent and purpose for more revenue. Let's face it, Synology branded drives with their own custom firmware are no doubt going to be more expensive than a third-party wide-label drive that we could easily in years past just order from Amazon, throw it in our Synology NAS device, and away we go. So I think at the end of the day, the consumer is hurt by this move with Synology uh, as their NAS devices are already the premium out of the field of competitors. So I think the NAS branded hard drives are going to push that price for Synology NAS devices out of scope for many in the SMB or the home lab environment. It's quite a shame. I really like Synology devices. I like the security aspect of the NAS device themselves. I think they make really great software. The software is uh, very stable. It's tested. It just works. And for many, the active backup solution was a solution for many years that we used in a free way and a legal way to back up uh, our enterprise hypervisors like VMware or Hyper-V. So I think it has a lot of value from the software perspective. However, this vendor lock-in is going to definitely come into play. So let's take a look at some of the best alternatives for 2025, both for folks who want a plug and play NAS and for those who want to build their own. TerraMaster has become one of the most popular Synology alternatives, especially for home labs, and their hardware supports standard drives, and their TOS software keeps getting better, and what's more, you don't get locked into a proprietary ecosystem, at least yet. You'll find everything from an affordable 2-bay model all the way up to 8-bay or even rack mount units with support for ButterFS, Snapshots, Docker, and more. Another company that has gained a lot of momentum is Ugreen, and it's an up-and-comer with the NASSYNC series, recently funded with a Kickstarter and already making waves. Uh, you can get modern hardware, 2.5 gig networking, 10 gig networking, uh, things like Plex, Time Machine compatibility, plus Ugreen is also not restricting third-party drives. The NASSYNC software is extremely user-friendly, and you get other features such as Cloud Sync and many other tools. Now, there's also something really exciting, I think, because I'm a fan of their hardware, uh, Minis Forum, known for their mini PCs, they have just teased their N5 Pro NAS, and this thing looks really awesome. You get five SATA bays, an NVMe slot, a 10 gig and a 5 gig Ethernet port, and you get the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX Pro 370 Strix Point processor, and that processor has 12 cores and 24 threads. Now, early impressions from Reddit and others in the home lab crowd are really positive. I think this is a great solution potentially for throwing your own NAS operating system onto that hardware. And I think this is where Minis Forum is really trying to target that sweet spot. They will provide the hardware with the knowledge that you're going to load something like TrueNAS Scale. Now let's talk about the open source category for a Synology alternative. And to prevent yourself from being locked into Synology branded drives, being able to use your own third party hard drives for your NAS operating system. Well, first is TrueNAS Scale or TrueNAS Core. If you want total control and also a ZFS-based NAS system, TrueNAS is rock solid, and you can install it on your own hardware or pick up a pre-built mini server or actually use an x86 server that you may have lying around. There's also Unraid that's super popular in the home lab space as well. It's flexible, it's easy to set up, and supports just about any type of disk configuration that you can think of. And then also there's Open Media Vault. And Open Media Vault is a great open source solution if you want something lightweight and it's perfect also for repurposing that old hardware that you may once again have lying around. Now there's also Exponology for the Brave. It's not officially supported, but if you love the DSM experience and want to bypass restrictions, this is Synology's OS running on custom hardware. Just know that updates can break things. Now if you already own a Synology NAS, you may not need to panic just yet, but if you're thinking about expanding or replacing your hard drives, this policy is probably something that's going to have to be in the back of your mind, at 
least in the near future. Synology makes great software. I think this is where they have really excelled in this NAS space. Unfortunately, if you're building a home lab or a storage server in 2025, this is something that you're probably going to have to really think long and hard about pulling the trigger for Synology NAS hardware moving forward. And I know there's going to be a serious backlash from the community with this. All right, guys, this is a wrap for today. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and smash that like button and drop a comment. Let me know what you think of Synology's new policy. Are you sticking with him or are you jumping ship? And don't forget to check out the full write-up on this topic over at Virtualization How To for even more details and other recommendations that you can check out. Once again, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you like this video. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on this recent development with Synology. Do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.